Hello everyone, welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. Welcome to my kitchen, it's lovely to have you join me. Um, I hope everyone's well, I hope you've all had amazing weeks and I hope you are all ready for your weekend to chill out and relax and take it easy. Um, but before we do that, we've got the Friday Night Curry Club to get going with. So this week, I've got my Prosecco. So I hope you're all having a little drink. If those of you who are, cheers and a happy weekend to you all. Um, so tonight we're cooking something a little bit different, but before I go on to that, like I always say, I always like to do a very big hello and welcome to you guys. So if you have, if you're new to um, the Friday Night Curry Club, make sure you say a little hello. Um, let me know where you are tuning in from. Let me know if you're cooking um, or just watching today. Um, let me know if it's the first time um, that you've joined us because it's always lovely to know where you're from and whether you've joined us before or whether you've cooked with me before, it's always good to know. So um, get those hellos coming in and while, I, while you do that I'm going to have a little sip. Have we got lots of people saying hello? We've got Amanda who's cooking along. Hi Amanda, where's Amanda from? Do we she know? Hasn't Don't know. Hi Amanda, where are you said. from? Welcome and I hope you have fun cooking with me tonight. It's going to be good. Isabella in Elk Grove, California. Hello Isabella in California. I'm not jealous We've at all. I hope you're well. Thank you for joining. Stephen in a very wet Belfast. Hello Stephen in Belfast. It's not raining here. We've had loads of rain as well, but um, welcome and thank you for joining me tonight. We've got Joni and Lawrence is here. Joni's cooking tonight. Hello Joni. Hello Lawrence. So it's Joni's turn. I need to do a little cheers because it's the first time in this year. That I'm having a little glass of Prosecco with you, so welcome, lovely to have you join. We've got a uh, new lay in Myanmar. Myanmar, who, yeah. what's the name? I... Sorry, Nyo we're going to pronounce it wrong. Nyo lay. Nyo lay. If I've said that wrong, I'm really, really sorry, but it's lovely to have you join. Welcome, thank you for coming We've along. Got... Tell us how to pronounce it properly. We've got Steve in Wisconsin, Linda in Arizona. Hi, Stephen in Wisconsin and Linda in Arizona. Amazing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely got to have you join. Oh, we've got more. Eric is in Madrid again. Matt's Hi, back. Eric in Madrid. And Matt Matt in... is in Eastern US. Eastern US. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to my world. I hope everybody is well. Um, as you join, make sure you say hello because I always like to give you a little shout out um, and just find out where you're cooking. Um, not where you're cooking, but if you are cooking or where you're tuning in from. Okay, so today we are making um, momos. And for those of you who don't know what a momo is, it's essentially very, very similar to a Chinese dumpling. Um, and these have become really, 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 really popular in India over the last few years. And you find them on street corners um, and they can be filled with anything. So I'm going to be using some minced chicken, um, which we're going to flavour and add some aromatics to. Um, but you can fill them with paneer, you can fill them with a mixed veg mixture, um, shredded cabbage, anything you like so whatever you've got you can mince it all up and you can fill these lovely little dumplings with it um we're also going to make an ajar so those of you who don't know what an ajar is it's um it's not necessarily a pickle but it's similar to um it's usually cooked and it's all about those zingy lovely flavors so the sweet sour savory um chili heat and all of that loveliness that goes on in your mouth and basically what you do is you get your dumpling you dip them in that jar and you munch away quite a lot of places in india what they do is they'll make the dumplings and then they'll toss them through the jar i quite like to dip mine in so i'm, I'm not going to be mixing them all up but you can do whatever you like so um as I always say, this is your opportunity to get the most out of me as you possibly can. So please keep those questions coming in. If there's um, something that I haven't explained, you can just ask and I will answer your questions. Um, if you are cooking along and you feel like I'm going too fast or too slow, please do shout. I know it's gonna be a bit tricky because you're gonna have stuff all over your hands, but please do shout out and I can slow it down or speed it up depending on what you guys are doing. 
So, have we got any questions or are we all good We've to go? We've got Missy, um, who's been talking Hello, to Missy. you on Facebook. Yes, hi, how are you doing? Here. She said, she made your red lentil dal and the tandoori chicken and said they're delicious, love them both. So glad I've invested in all the proper spices and a variety of lentils. Yay, I'm so pleased. Everything that I do is all about getting you guys um, the tools and hopefully a little bit of knowledge that you can just go away and cook all of this stuff all by yourself and add your own little twist and, 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 and just enjoy the food. That's what food is for me. It's all about enjoying the, the process of putting it together and the process of eating it, which is always the fun bit. Um, for those of you who don't have the app, please do download my app. It's free. Just go to your um, app store and type in Harry Gotra and you can download it. There's an amazing community of people who chit chat, who talk about food, who share ideas, who share pictures. Um, so if you're cooking tonight, I want you to make sure that you take pictures. You can take behind the scenes shots, you can take pictures of your finished dish, but I love to see what you've created um, after we do this session. Okay, so I'm gonna talk you through what I've got. Now this is gonna be, um, it's not gonna go on too long. Usually I try to keep it to about an hour and quite often we overrun, but that's fine. But this is going to be, so there's, um, a few little sort of different elements to this dish um, and as I said in my um, post that I put up over the week these are little sort of tasters little little bites so it's not going to be a full-on meal um, and I did say to you if you wanted to make it a little bit of a snacky meal get some um, ribs or wings or something in the oven as well so that you can have a bit more of a Friday night snackathon. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do that chutney first so that that has time to bubble away and just cook down so we can blitz it all later. For the chutney what we need are some tomatoes which I've got here, some garlic, lots of it, um, some ginger and some dried red chilies which I've got here. Um, we are also going to put into there some vinegar so I've got some white wine vinegar here um, and some uh, some sugar for the sweetness a little bit of salt or soy sauce if you want to use it so this dish is very much so it's, it's basically a Nepali dish and it's got quite a bit of Chinese influence in there so it's a sort of mixture of all of those lovely Indian spices with the, some of the Chinesey flavors so it's a really lovely combo I think um, the other thing that um, this jar or this pickle is known for is sesame seeds. So if you've got some sesame seeds, you can also add those as well. I've got a few here. Um, it wasn't on my recipe list, so if you haven't got it, don't worry about it. You can just miss it out. So the first thing we're going to do is get this jar going. And with my dry chilies, I'm just going to take the stalks off. And I've got a pan here, and my pan's got about 200 mils of water in there already. So we just take those um, stalks off. And I'm using five chilies here. Sounds like a lot, but these are Kashmiri chilies, and they're not um, really spicy as such. They're not really potent. Um, so if you like your dishes spicy especially your chutneys and so on you could also put some fresh chilies in there as well just to sort of bulk up that heat level um i'm also going to add some ginger fresh ginger skin and all is going in and then i've got garlic here i've got five no i haven't i've got four cloves of garlic they're quite big though so i'm just going to chop them in half and get those in as well and this is my kind of cooking where you literally just chuck everything in and hope for the best. So that's the garlic going in. It smells really, really good already. And that's just because I like garlic. So tomatoes. Trace, Tracy's here. Hi in Tracy Australia. from the US. Australia. From Australia. Oh yes. Hello Tracy. Sorry about that. I um you thought that I'd messed the time up. I I posted about today and I put the wrong date. Um for the live stream and I, th I know it confused a few of you so apologies for that but welcome lovely to have you join us as always so Tracy joins us from is it West, Western Australia so. every week without fail I have did I see your pictures from last week's cooking I'm not sure I did but welcome it's lovely to have you join um 
Is there a drop of oil in the pot or water? No, so all I've got in the pan is water, um, 200 mils-ish. Um, four cloves of garlic have gone in, my chilies have gone in, and I'm just chopping up three tomatoes and then, really roughly and chucking those in. Um, Isabel has asked, I don't have cashmere chilies, what should I replace them with? So if, um, it depends what chilies you've got. If you've got any dried chilies, um, just be aware that you don't want anything too hot because it can overpower. Um, if you've got um, chili powder, you can use chili powder instead. You could just put some chili powder in. Um, again, go for a hopefully a mildish one or less of a hot one because you don't want it to be too too strong. Um, Say hello to Mark in Johannesburg. It's not cooking tonight, but baking a sourdough turmeric and pumpkin seed loaf. Hello, Mark in Johannesburg. Johannesburg, welcome. Lovely to have you join. What is it? A sourdough, sourdough with turmeric, turmeric and pumpkin seed and loaf. pumpkin seeds. Right, take a photo. I want to see how it comes out. Um, take a photo and make sure you post it because that sounds really good. And then we've you didn't say hello earlier. We've got Sue's here. Dean is here. Hi, Sue. Welcome. Hank is here as well. Right. Who's that? Hank. Hi, Dean. And Hank. Hello, Hank. Are you cooking today? I don't yes. think you told me. You He's are cooking. cooking. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you join. Um, all the way from the US, that's right, isn't it? Florida. Um, Florida. <laughs> At some point, we'll be able to get over there again. Okay, so in that pan, we've got tomatoes. We've got garlic. I've got ginger. I've got those um, dried red chilies. Um, what else have I got in there? That's it, I think. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So it just you just want to make sure that everything's... Whoopsie, the camera's in a different place. Can you see in there or not? There you go. So everything's sort of floating and simmering away. So I'm just going to let that simmer. What we want to happen is for this to come to the boil and then we want all the tomatoes and everything to break down. And what we're going to do then is we're going to blitz it with my hand blender just to make a really lovely puree. Now, as I mentioned, if you've got some sesame seeds, you can pop those in as well, and they're just gonna cook away. Um, and you can put about a tablespoon to two tablespoons in there. They will um, add a really lovely nuttiness, but what they'll also do is help thicken that jar as well, that sauce, when, once we've blended it. So I'm just gonna give that a mix. Now, I think in my recipe, what I do then is, once I come to blitz it, I then add vinegar, sugar, a little bit of salt. Um, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, and uh, soy sauce as well. Um, you can, if you want to, just so that you know you've done it, you can just put that in now and it'll all just sort of come together. So we'll just do that now. So I've got a teaspoon of sugar which is going to go in. So remember, and a good jar and a good sort of pickle is all about all of those flavours, the sweet, the sour, the savoury, the um, chilli heat, and all of those lovely things. I'm going to pop my vinegar in as well. I'm going to put a little bit more than I say in the recipe. So I think I say a teaspoon, but I like that zingy flavour. So I've added a little bit more. Um, and I'm also going to put a little bit of salt in, but I'm also going to put a bit of soy in as well. Now mine's just starting to come to the boil, which is perfect. So I'm gonna move that onto the other hob and just let that simmer away. And hopefully, if you're doing this at home, you will see and start to smell some really delicious aromatics. I'm gonna show you what my pan looks like, if you can see it, otherwise I will, as always, take pictures and I'll put them on my stories. So do you want to take a photo of that, yeah. Maya? Um, and then you can obviously see what it looks like later. Um, could you toast the sesame seeds to get a nutty flavour? You absolutely can toast your sesame seeds. You can toast them and they will give them, it will give them a really lovely nuttiness and a really nice, all the oils will come out as well and it's just a really lovely thing to do. So yes, um, absolutely. And then I've only got red wine vinegar, is that okay? That's fine. 
I always say use what you've got. Um, if you've got red wine vinegar, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's going to add the same sort of zinginess that you want. And then can you leave out the sugar because of diabetes? You can leave out the sugar. Um, you will get sweetness from the tomatoes. Um, always cook everything to suit your um, personal sort of dietary requirements. Um, obviously, it just won't be as sweet. So absolutely, yep, you can do that. That's not a problem. Right, just sorting myself out. Is everybody still with me? And any more questions? Can we use canned tomatoes? You can use canned tomatoes, absolutely. You can use tinned tomatoes if that's what you've got. Um, there's no problem doing that. It's just when you're cooking something like a, a pickle or an jar or something fresh, just because you because it, it just lends itself and it's got the acidity and so on. But if you've got some tin tomatoes, that will work as well. So don't worry or don't not do it because you think that you haven't got the right stuff. Did you remove the flesh and seeds from the tomatoes or just quarter them? Oh, no, 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 no. So um, those of you who've cooked with me before um, and those of you who, who sort of know me through the app and the website and stuff, I am... Um, for me, cooking is about chucking stuff in and there's very little in the way of waste. So I would never um, skin a tomato or take the seeds out. Um, everything's going to be blitzed down to a really nice puree anyway. So yeah, none of that. And none of the faff, you know, who's got time to flip in, take the seeds out of a tomato? Are you kidding me? Um, but no, it's all in there. We're not talking about fine, fine dining. We're talking about really good, yummy flavours and home cooking okay everyone's still with me kathy says hi harry i made your dal recipe kathy. all the time we love it thanks for all you do from a canadian that lives in cambridgeshire yay really good to know i'm so happy that lentil dal recipe people seem to love um and it's really simple and you're a canadian living in cambridge oh cambridge is beautiful i do like cambridge um never been to canada so that's going to be on my list of places to go Okay, are we ready to move on? So what we're going to do next, the reason I'm doing it in this order is so that the um, a jar and the, or the tomatoes and everything have enough time to sort of break down so we can blitz them. I'm doing the dough next because the dough needs a little bit of time to rest. Um, if you... If you joined me when we had our lovely friend Alex, the baker, who um, who came up what was it, what, two weeks ago two now, weeks ago. about two or three weeks ago, um, he was very vocal about the fact that whenever you make a dough like this, you do need to let it rest. And a few of you did ask me, should we do it beforehand? And absolutely, you can do it beforehand. But for me, when I'm sort of doing this kind of a session, it doesn't make any sense for me to do it before and then you guys to say oh well you've already done it so i like to do it all as we're chit chatting so i've got here 300 grams of plain flour that's another question that came up is it adda is it plain flour is it wholemeal it's just plain flour um, um all-purpose flour also known as all-purpose flour so i'm just putting a little bit of salt in and then we are just going to bring that together with some water to make a dough now whenever I do this I always say just give my tomatoes and everything a little mix now it's on a fairly high heat just going back to the just so that it reduces and and um and all starts to come together it's smelling really lovely actually um so always just use one hand if you dive in with two hands you end up with two mucky hands and you can't do anything and it's all a bit of a, a nightmare so just pour in a little bit of water a little bit of a water i'll say that again a little bit of water at a time so what am i doing adding a little bit of water <laughs> <laughs> okay so a little bit at a time if you put it all in in one go um you'll either end up with too much in there or not enough and different flour will absorb different amounts of water at different times so you know be careful so a little bit and then we go around and we mix it and we start to bring it together and then you add a little bit more Matt said would you hate me if I use pre-made goza wrappers no good 
Do you know what? That's fine. That is absolutely fine to do. If you've got some knocking around in your freezer, then absolutely fine. Is Utta flour worth buying? I'm filling up my next shopping cart at the Indian market and wondering if it's worth picking up. Is it just used for rotis? So Utta is... Um, is a, it's, I think it's a, a really nice flour. Um, yes, you can u- you use it for rotis. You can use it to make naan. You can use it as just your basic flour um, if you want to. It, um, it's different because it uses the whole wheat germ and it's ground up. It's a better flour for you because, um, because of the glycemic value and all of that stuff. So it is a healthier option. Um, you can make bread with it. You can make, um, I think I've got shortbread recipe on the website. You can do anything with it. You can treat it in the same way as normal flour um it really depends on how much you make rotis how much you make naan but you can use it for other things um you sometimes need to adapt it slightly or adapt your recipe but yeah absolutely i would you know get a small bag to begin with i know quite often in lots of indian shops you get the massive big bags so just get a small bag and see how you get on with it and if it's something that suits um then something that you can add onto your list okay so i'm just mixing this flour up now it's really important that you knead it because we want it to be nice and soft so i'm just bringing it together for the minute tim says it makes great pizza dough as well yeah great pizza dough you're absolutely right tim thank you for pointing that out yep i've made um so i've got an ebook about um indian bread and there are loads and loads of different options for how you use up on there um i've got i think i've got turmeric and something bread in there there's all kinds of things you can do with it so it's not just rotis oh yeah so if you want to look at just below here on the screen that you're looking at i've got a merchandise shelf and you will see the ebooks um that i've got available at the moment so you can just download those and they are really really good little recipe books for you to have okay so my atta or my dough is starting to come together now now i want to knead this a little bit more could you mix it in a mixer you absolutely can use a mixer there's nothing wrong with using a mixer you can do exactly the same thing in less time um i love using my mixer but i thought i'd do it with my hand today just to show that i do do some hard work so I'm just going to knead it so that it's nice and soft a little bit more. I'm because I'm so short. I'm having to really stand on my tiptoes because I'm on my chopping board as well. I'm not that sure really. You are not that. Sure. I'm not that sure really. Okay, how are we doing? What, Is everybody with me? What should the consistency be of the dough? So it should be like a pliable plasticine. Um, for those of you who've made samosas, it's very similar to that. Um, it's, it's very soft, but you do need to work it a little bit because we're going to roll these out and then we're going to be making these little, almost like little pastries with them. So you do need to work it and let it all come together. But I always say you roughly know that it's done when you've got a clean bowl and you've got a clean hand. So that's what you should be aiming for. So those of you who are just covered at the moment in flour, you're not quite there yet. Okay. There we go. So I'll show you what it looks like. Nice and soft. So we're gonna let that rest and we'll have a look at our chutney again. Okay, is everyone with me? I'm going to give the chutney a little mix or the ajar. So if you can see, so you should see it's really starting to change colour. Can you see that? Take a little photo. Yep. 
Now you'll know that it's done. And this is my little trick. This is how I test if it's done. I haven't got a tea towel. Where's my tea towel gone? In the cupboard. Okay. Um, the way that I know it's done is what I will do is just using the back of my spoon, I will just press the garlic on the side. And once it starts to crush really easily without too much pressure, you know that you're pretty much there. So it's still got a little bit of a way to go. Oh, that's looking good. There we go, that's all starting to come together now. Lovely. So I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes, just pop that to one side. I'm going to wash my hands. Have we got any questions while I'm washing my hands? Well, someone has said I'm going to have to veganise this one, so could you maybe talk about, I don't know, you could have a chat about veganising this? So, um, when I post these recipes um, on a Wednesday, I always try to give vegan options and vegetarian options for every dish that I do. So absolutely, you can totally veganise this. Um, um, a really good um, thing to do is you can use any mixed veg at all. So you could use pea, frozen peas, so just a bag of frozen veg would work. Um, shredded cabbage is really, really good for this. And you basically do, it's exactly the same process. Um, what I would recommend though, if you're cooking veg or you've got some cabbage or anything, I would saute that, that off with the onions and I'll tell you when. Um, as we go through the process, but absolutely, Indian food is amazing to veganise because it just works really, really well. There's lots of opportunities or lots of ingredients that you can use to make it a vegan dish. And because of the spices and because of the aromatics that we use, it just gives it that amazing flavour. How? Um, what, more questions? I'm going to take a little break. Can whole wheat flour work? Whole wheat flour will work. It will just, it won't be as, it'll be a bit more dense um, and a little bit heavier than, than these dumplings. But yes, you can use it. There's no reason why you can't. It will obviously be a darker colour and so on, but it will be, uh, the little momos will be much, they'll be heavier. So, yeah, but again, if that's what you're used to using, then then it won't matter so much to you because you'll already, you know, you'll already be um, aware of the texture and the density and all of that kind of stuff. How far are we trying to reduce the liquid in the tomato? So I want to reduce my liquid a little bit more than that. It's quite watery at the moment, but once, as soon as we blitz this up, it will, um, it will thicken. So. Not too much, but I want to just make sure that my chilies are really soft um, and that my garlic is cooked because there's nothing worse than the raw sort of garlic flavour. So I'm just going to keep that going for a little bit longer. Matt says I'm using tofu instead of chicken, so no other changes really. Ah, tofu, there you go. See, easy, easy option um, to veganise your dish. Okay, so is everybody still with me? in terms of what we're, what we're doing. Yeah, right, for the next bit then, which is um, where we start to add our flavors and our aromatics to whatever ingredient you're using. I'm using minced chicken, you could be using paneer, you could be using tofu, um, you could be using shredded cabbage, you could be using vegetables. Peas and paneer is a really lovely combo for this dish. Um, what we're going to do is, we're going to make it super easy with my little chopper. Um, I've got spring onions here, so spring onions work really well with this dish. And what I'm going to do first is just take the ends off, obviously, because we don't want those bits. And then I'm going to just use the white bits, just chop those up and add those into my chopper now the reason I'm using the chopper is because it just makes everything really nice and fine and this is what we want for this dish because we're going to be mixing everything together and we want that all finely chopped um, filling to fit nicely inside our momos so in here I've got the um, whites of the onion and I'm going to put some garlic in there I'm using four 
And I will be using these and I'll be using them um, a little bit later just to mix everything together in. Keep it, keep an eye on your... Isabella says she's using ground beef instead of chicken. Oh, ground beef, that will work. Pork will work. Um, anything will work. Everything will work. Right, my garlic is starting to get nice and soft now as well, so I'm going to keep it going. It smells really good though. Makes me very excited. Okay, so I'm going to just blitz this up. If you haven't got a chopper, that's fine. Just chop up really nice and finely, as finely as you can get it. You could grate it, you could put it in a blender. What you don't want is it to turn into a watery, liquidy mush. So it still needs to have some texture. But nice and fine. Now, this doesn't require a lot of cooking, this this bit of the dish. But just make sure that you're happy with it. So I'm just going to push this down a little bit and start again, just because spring onion can be a little bit, it can have that um, papery thin. Right, that should be it. So that's what we're looking for. If I just show you. Okay. Yum. Right, so I'm going to heat up my frying pan. I'm going to pop a little bit of oil in there and I'm going to saute these off. Now, in some recipes for Momo's, uh, people just put everything raw in with the meat, which is absolutely fine. You can do that. I just like to saute off the garlic and the onion um, just because it does have that rawness to it. Um, we are obviously going to be cooking it and it will cook later, but I just prefer to just saute them off a little bit first. So a little bit of oil in there. And then I need to use a different spoon. I'm just going to pop that in. And we don't want any colour as such. We just want to get rid of that sort of raw garlic flavour. And whilst that is doing its thing, I'm just going to blitz up some ginger and some chilli. So I've got two green finger chilies going in here as well, um, because we want a little bit of spice in there. So I've got ginger going in, which I've roughly chopped. Give that a little stir. Now you can, when you're cooking your momos, you can steam them or you can fry them. And it really depends on what you want to do. And I will show you both ways. So I've got a steamer here. If you've got a bamboo steamer, brilliant. Um, if you've just got a metal one, like my pan, that's absolutely fine too. Um, but we're going to do them in both ways. Personally, I prefer to fry them because I like the crispy, the crispy bottom. Um, but it really depends on you. It's your personal choice. Now, if you are using um, any frozen veg or anything like that, what you need to do is just saute off your onions and your garlic. Um, and then... You can add your peas to that. Um, what you can do is you can blitz your peas and then add them to that. Um, if you're using shredded cabbage, shred it up nice and finely, and then that can go in. Just needs to just want it to cook a little bit before you add it in. I just think it gives a better flavour, personally. Um, yep. Mitch, she's just saying I'm having a hard time finding the right green chilies. I think. I've been using Serrano, which I think is a Mexican one. It's the only thing I can find in my area. Yeah. Um, Serrano chilies are probably, I mean, if you can't find them, um, the finger chilies or the rocket chilies, Serrano chilies are fine. Um, the other alternative I usually say is a Thai chili. Thai chilies are a little bit hotter, but it's a good alternative to use. But Serrano is absolutely fine. I think they're slightly hotter, but... 
needs must. So, so all I've got in here is my ginger and my garlic. I'm going to pop that in as well. I've just I opened the lid and breathed in, so the chili's gone right to the back of my throat. So if I start coughing, I apologise now. Right, there we go. Now I'm going to turn that off. That's all I want, just a little bit of heat to it, just to get rid of the raw flavours. That's it. Oh, yum. Okay. I'm going to sneeze in a minute as well. Huh. Okay, so. All of this oh is going to go into my chicken in a minute. Before I do that, I think, yeah, we're pretty much there now. So I'm just going to test it one more time. Just squish that garlic on the back of the spoon and it's absolutely soft as you like. So that's how much I've reduced it. And you should, I don't know if you can tell here, but it's thickened up, almost quite syrupy now. So that's good to go. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to pop it into my jug because I'm going to blitz all this with a hand blender. Let me take a picture first. Oh, I want to take a photo just so we can show you. Um, if you're not using a hand blender, you can just pour it in. If you've got a Nutribullet or whatever it might be, um, you can just pour it straight in there or if you're using a blender, just let it cool for a minute first. So I'm just going to pop that in here. The colour of it is beautiful. So all of that goes in. And remember, we've already added our vinegar, we've already added our um, sugar and so on, and that sort of helped the process a bit. But what I am going to do would you say it's reduced by about half? I'd say it's reduced by about half. I'm going to add a little bit, so I've just tasted it. It needs a bit more salt, if I'm honest. So I've added a little bit more salt. So that is going to just sit there, and we're going to blend that in a minute. Okay. So, if mine is still rather watery, should I add a teaspoon more sesame seeds to thicken, or don't worry? Um... You can leave it on the heat just to let it reduce down a little bit more, I think. That's probably the best bet rather than adding anything to it. I mean, it's not completely, it's not completely syrupy. It's still quite fairly watery, but um, that will all thicken up as soon as we blend it. So don't worry too much. Okay, so into the chicken, I'm going to add this mixture of onions, garlic, ginger and chilli. And you know me, I don't like to waste anything, so I'll scrape all that off. Now, I'm going to have to wash this pan up because I don't have a washer upper because this is what I'm going to be frying my um, momos in. So I will do that in a minute. I'll leave that there for a second. Now, into here, we're going to start to add a few different aromatics as well. So in here, I'm going to put some coriander seeds, ground coriander seeds, not whole, and some ground cumin seeds. I'm just using my um, hand grinder. So about a teaspoon coriander. Mm, smells very zingy. And cumin. And I'm also going to add a little bit of turmeric, so half a teaspoon or so. And maybe a touch more. And I'm going to put some chilli powder in. And then I'm going to also add some chopped up coriander. So I've got some coriander here. I'm going to keep a little bit for garnish in a moment. But nice and fine. Chop that up.
Now, whenever you're chopping up coriander, I always say this, just go through it with your knife once. You don't want to keep on going through over and over and over again because you'll damage the leaves um, and you'll change the colour of it. So you don't want too much. I'm going to keep a little bit back as a garnish. There we go. So coriander is in. I'm also going to chop up a couple of these, so I'll keep that. So I'm going to chop, chop the green stuff up as well. Now, if you have got your chopper to hand, you can just put it in there. I'm going to go over this a couple of times. I should have kept my big knife out, but I haven't. So we're just going to go through it a few more times. Get it nice and fine. Have we got any more questions coming in at all? Are we all good? That's making me cry. A lot of love for the grinders. A lot of love for that grinder. Love a good grinder. Right, chop some of that in. I'm going to keep some for garnish later. Oh, gosh, it's making me cry. You'd think I'd be used to it by now. This is only a spring onion. Johnny, onion. Johnny has the epicurean canricon grinder because he's posh where he is ah, he you're posh are you johnny well i'm very humbled that you've joined me today sarah in hammersmith has asked where can i get the cumin and coriander grinders so the cumin and coriander grinders that i use these are canricon um we have probably got a link um or we can add a link on we'll let you know um, where to get them from they are really 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 handy especially for things like this um, if you haven't got a pestle and mortar they work really well so if there are thick stalks in the coriander would you remove them or it does it not matter so it depends how thick you what you mean by how thick your stalks are so sometimes they can be almost woody get rid of those but if they are a little bit thick, but they can, you can still chop them up, that's absolutely fine to do. So ideally, there's a lot of flavour in those stalks, so you can use um, the stalks as well. They give really good, yummy flavour. Okay, so in here, just as a recap, I've got my minced chicken. If you're using paneer or tofu, you wanted to have grated it or crumbled it. Um, we've put in the garlic, the white part of your onion sauteed with some ginger and some chili that's gone in here I then added um, some turmeric I've added chopped up coriander I've added the green part of the spring onion all nice and chopped and I have added chili powder I'm also going to add a little bit of salt but I'm going to also put in a little bit of soy sauce as well so you can do one or the other I'm just adding a little bit of both um, and also what we want in here is a about a tablespoon or so of oil um, and that just helps everything keep really lovely and moist so a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons and then let's bring all of that together and just mix that up Oh, and coriander and cumin, I forgot. Mixture. Now, if you're using your veg and so on, exactly the same process. Just add all of those ingredients in. Um, Mike has said, I'm looking to uh, sash lick chicken tomorrow. Is mustard paste the same as a type of mustard, i.e. English or Dijon? Yeah, so you can just use, um, just use English mustard. Um, obviously not a lot of it so um, mustard paste sometimes in Indian shops you can find um, what we call gasundi and that is a paste made with mustard seeds um, which is the same as mustard um, but it's got these little black flecks in there but you can just use mustard um, English or Dijon whichever one you want but obviously you just need to flex how much you put in you don't want to put loads of the English mustard in because it will be nose tinglingly pungent but yeah absolutely you can just use a little bit of mustard okay so this is what my mixture looks like 
and I think I might add a little bit more. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Yum. I think I'm going to put a little bit more of the spring onion greens in there. Just chop those up nice and fine. looking good to me so how are we doing guys we're gonna take a little break while you all catch up or are we all at the same point i hope so we have a little clear down now i just need to wash this pan so that i'm ready to get cooking in a minute Okay. Any any comments coming through? Are they the ratchet spice grinders? They are the ratchet spice grinders. That's exactly what they are. They're really good if you've got um, any issues with your lots of dexterity or that. anything. They work really really well. Rather than having to. Missy said grind. she. Missy has cerebral palsy and said they're really great. And Sandra's got dexterity issues and says they're really, really great. They're really, really, really easy. So they're very, very helpful um, if you do have any issues like that. Okay, so I'm just going to let that sit for a moment. And I'm going to come back to my chutney. And I'm just going to start to grind that up because I just want to make sure... <coughs> chilies ...that... Um, if I need to adjust any seasoning, I can do that. So I'm going to have to do this over here. Now, if you are ready as well, I would encourage you to give this a bit of a grind. Now, be very, very careful with breathing and um, make sure it doesn't go in your eyes or anything. So be very careful. <laughs> right but I'm going to add I'm quite salty I like to have a little bit more so I'm going to put a little bit more soy always taste to adjust now if you prefer it a bit sweeter you can add a little bit more sugar um, if you want a little bit more zing because it's not very zingy because obviously we haven't added a lot of the vinegar you absolutely can add a little bit more so if I show you what the texture looks like you could probably do with a little bit more blending just to blitz the um, sesame seeds out a little bit more but it's looking good have a little Debbie checked out your Punjabi t-shirt and loves it on her wish list yay my Punjabi Friday night curry club t-shirt I need to get one myself actually I must do that then we can all wear the same uniform when we're cooking together 
which is always good. Who needs a chef's jacket, hey? Okay, so that's the chutney done or the ajar done. Now, are we happy to move on and start making them? Right, if you've um, just made your chutney, if you just blitzed it, have a taste and let me know what you think because I'd love to hear your thoughts while I have a little wipe down and a clear down so that we can start to make these delicious little momos. Now it's not going to be overly strong in its flavour, it's quite a gentle ajar. So just be mindful. Okay. Um, I think people are about to blitz. You're about to blitz? Do you want me to wait then? I'll let you blitz away. a little break. I'm going to have a little move of this bits and bobs as well because we're going to be rolling out. So have a little wipe down and make sure that you're comfortable with your space and you probably need to get a plate or a tray or something that you're going to put your momos onto um, before you cook them. Emptied my jug and cleaning the extras with a spoon now. Uh, Chutney seems more salty like a pickle. Okay, that's fine. If it's, if it's salty enough for you, that's fine. Mine was a bit under. It is, yeah, so an Indian pickle tends to be quite salty. Um, How long will a jar keep? Seems like a lot for two people. Um, that will keep for quite a while, so you can just pop that into a jug or into a, a plastic pot and just pop it in the fridge. It's really good on toast and random things like that. So you can have it and with cheese and um, that kind of thing. You can, um, you can use it as an Indian tomato ketchup if you like. Joni's just said, this is so funny. We've just found out my dad's watching in Yorkshire. Hi, Hello. Joni's dad in Yorkshire. Lovely to have you join us. Kevin, Amazing. Kevin and Sally. Kevin and Sally. Kevin and Sally. Hello. Welcome. Lovely to... Have you join us from Yorkshire? <laughs> okay, so I need you guys to give me the okay when you're ready to start doing this. Look at that. Yum, 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 yum. So that um, I can get, I'll I'm show you so how to do a few. Right, so what we want to do is, you'll probably get about 20 out of this. Um, and if you wanted to, you could just make up or divide it up into 20 balls now. They need to be fairly, fairly small. And it might help if you've got a little bit of dusting just on the side. Um, now what you can, you can do it in one of two ways. You can either just roll them out and um, be resigned to the fact that they're not all going to be perfectly round. That's my kind of cooking. Or you can get out a little, actually I've got a little, you can get out a little chopper and you can just press them out if that's what you want to do. Um, I finished blitzing, it's still watery. Is it okay to put back yeah, in the hob on yeah. the low heat? If it's still watery, you can pop it back on the hob if you want to um, and just let that reduce just gently. It will do that sort of volcano blip so just be aware okay so we want them really nice and thin like that and what we're going to do is we're going to be putting about a tablespoon of the mixture into the middle and then we're going to fold them up and you can fold them in lots of different ways we're going to just make little pouches um, and then just pop them to one side and then we'll cook them however we're ready. So are people ready to go or are we still sort of waiting? Kevin, so Joni's Hello dad, Joni's dad, Kevin. Or I don't remember whose dad, <laughs> one of them. Um, said, hi Harry, love the videos, you're now my go-to cookery book. Lovely to hear that Kevin, that's what I like to hear. Um, the other thing I was going to say is you probably don't need any water, but you might need some water just to help seal them. So I'm going to get going on this first one. And like pancakes, 
always the first one that never quite works. So I'm just putting it out there. So this is going to be a fairly big one. <laughs> now what you want to do is pick it up in your hand. Okay. Like that. Now you can do it in lots of different ways. I mean, some people like to just fold them over. Um, you can make all kinds of sort of pleats like that. I'm just go literally just going to just bring them together like that. So you've got a little bit at the top, and we'll probably make a different, a whole different selection of them. This one. I'm just pleating. Can you not see? Oh, it's fine. So you end up with all these little pleats, and then you have your bit at the top there. Okay? So I'm going to do a few of them. Now that was a big one, so I'm going to go smaller this time. And what you can do is have a little, keep a little hole in the middle. And as you go, as you start making them, you'll get better and better and better. Now, as I said, the other way to do it is you can just roll out and make cutouts. So that you get that lovely round shape. The thinner you go, the better they will be. Filling into the middle. Yeah, just do it. And as I said, about a tablespoon. You don't want to put a tiny bit in there so that when you come to um, take a bite, you haven't got any filling because that's just rubbish. So Johnny's just having a mare tonight and is way behind, so. Oh. What's wrong? Where are you, Johnny? He said, I'm going to have to go and rewind. <laughs> so you just pleat that top. Pleat, 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 pleat. And then you end up with that little parcel. It looks very pretty. Take a picture, take a picture, take a picture. Can you hold them in your hands? Oh, just take a picture. So that's what they look like. Can you see? Can you come back? Go. So I'm going to keep going. Johnny, where are you? I can repeat if you need me to. I can just talk you through what what we're doing. Now this is the kind of dish that you need to have a production line for. So again, roll out. Nice and thin. It's also a really nice Sunday afternoon job, like making samosas. Andrew said that's why we're doing this tomorrow. Ah, see, you're clever, Andrew. You're very clever. There we go. And then your mixture in the middle. You make it look so easy. I know mine are just going to fall apart. They are not going to fall apart. Give yourself some credit. Now, um, can so these be made in advance, say a few hours? Yes, they can be made in advance. Um, you don't want to be doing it as the last thing when you've got guests coming over. You can do them. You could even do them the day before um, and just keep them in the fridge in an airtight tub just don't have them touching each other the other thing you could do I guess I don't know if it'd be as good is you can cook them beforehand 
and then you can just pop them in the oven the next day just to heat through they'll still stay crispy they won't be as good as fresh but that's what you end up with johnny said i've got a good memory i'll just open another bottle of wine <laughs> And someone said, oh, I bet you could, could you just do a fold over and crimp? Yes, you can fold over. So there's lots of different ways to make them, just, just like with Chinese dumplings, um, all kinds of different ways. And you'll probably find a way that suits you best. So I'm going to make four of these and then I might move on and see if I can do something. You can get, get a bit creative, get, um, get cooking. Now, if you're steaming these... I would recommend that you get your water on now. So I've already got some. Actually, I'm gonna, so I've already got some water in here. I'm gonna get that heating up because obviously you want it to be nice and hot and bubbling and steaming. So let's just do another one of these. Now I'm not like the professionals. You see some of these people and their beautiful, beautiful patterns that they can make with this. I can't do that. Can you steam them for a bit and then fry for a crispy bottom? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do um, the crispy bottom as well. So I'm going to fry some and I'm going to steam some and I'll show, you, I'll show you how to do both. I prefer the fried version because it's just yummy. So same principle, just... Go around, just make sure that they seal nicely, which these all have, you can tell. There we go. Right, a different style now. How are we getting on? Are people getting them made? Because what I'm going to do is I will do these four and I will show you how to steam them and I will show you how to fry them. They will probably take about about 15 to 20 minutes to steam um, and the way that you can tell that they've finished steaming and they've, they've cooked through is that they will stop. Once they go into the steamer they'll be quite sticky. Once they've stopped being sticky then you know that, you're, that they are okay. Oh, am I? Apparently. I'm about to be on the one show on the telly or some of my videos are so if you've got a telly on turn it on double screen double screen me on everything right okay so I'm just trying a different a different <laughs> version it's already finished it's already finished <laughs> so don't bother putting your telly on okay Right, so this is the other thing that you can do. So we've done. And you can make, ideally, you can just make them like that. Just make sure you push them, the filling inside. You're on Andrew's TV. Oh, am I on your TV, Andrew? That's so cool. Oh, you made me drop my Momo. Got so excited. <laughs> so there's all different things that you can do. This one I've made a bit of a mess with, but hey ho. But that's the other thing that you can do. You can have them that way as well. Just flatten the bottom out a bit because then they'll go nice and crispy on the bottom. So that's a different version. I'm gonna do another one just whilst the water is boiling. What I'm gonna do is wash my hands first. I've got some very excited children here, they love these. And it's one of those things that you sort of think, oh, it's taken me ages to do, and they're finished in a flash, <laughs> which, is, which is okay. So I'm gonna gonna go so with. many of them, I'm so excited. So this one I've done. There you go. Put a little bit in the middle there. Someone said, do you do house calls? Asking for a very hungry friend. <laughs> do 
depends where you live I'm afraid you know we are in the middle of a lockdown <laughs> Zara's on their fourth Momo oh really oh what making it or eating it I'm not sure I'm hoping you mean making it that's really good I've got flour all over yeah I'm not very good at this shape see that just make sure it's all inside there we go there we go okay so these are looking pretty good I'm gonna what I'm going to do So as to not keep you here all night, I'm going to show you what you need to do to steam them and to fry them. So my water is boiling here. What's really important is that you just get a tissue and just make sure you oil the base of your steamer to stop them sticking because they can stick. Now, when you put them into your steamer, make sure they're not touching each other because they will expand a little bit and you don't want them to be stuck to each other. So I'm just going to pop these two in here and I'm going to put them in there with the lid on and we're going to steam those. So that, as I said, because they're quite big, they will take about 20 minutes or so. If you want to fry them, what you need to do is a little bit of oil and just heat that up. Ideally, um, I think it's easier to go for like a non-stick pan because it just makes life a little bit easier because the last thing you want to happen is that they stick to the bottom and you're trying to get them off and all the inside comes out after all that effort you've put in. So get it nice and hot. Um, Missy's got a question. She has said, I've got a can of amal ghee, but the can... Is that animal? Amal ghee? But the can says clarified water buffalo and cow milk fat. I haven't opened it yet, but I wanted to see. Is that the sort of ghee you use or just cow milk ghee? So it's generally, so traditional ghee is from buffalo milk. Um, the ghee that you tend to get in this country tends to be cow um, milk. But if you've got a blend there, that should be, it should be brilliant. It would be really nice and rich in flavour. So yeah, give it a go. Let me know what it comes out like in terms of flavour and, and, and depth and stuff. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, so my oil is hot. These are going to go in. And they're just starting to bubble. Nice and crispy. Obviously, I've still got loads more of these to make. Now what we're going to do is, once they start to get a little bit of colour on the bottom, I'll probably put a tad too much oil in there, but that's okay. Once they get a little bit crispy on the bottom, um, I'm going to add a little bit of water and put the lid on. So it's your, what you're doing is you're steaming the bottom, uh, sorry, you're frying the bottom and then um, you're steaming them as well so that they, all the meat and everything inside cooks through. Um, you could, if you wanted to, deep fry them, um, but I prefer to do them like this. And both of those methods are on the website and on the app as well. So, is anyone else at this point of cooking or are you going to make them all first and then cook them? Which I think is probably the right thing to do, but I don't want to sort of be here making loads of them and then keep you from your Friday nights and turn that up. Liz higher. in Scotland has said great stream as usual. Oh good, lovely to know that you guys are enjoying the live streams. Please do always give us a little thumbs up. Um, it's always nice to get feedback from you so that I know how you're feeling about it. Make sure for those of you who haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe and give us a little thumbs up because it all helps. Um, Instagram, 
And if you don't follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest, then make sure you start doing that too because I am literally everywhere and um, it has become my job to help you guys cook some delicious food. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a crispy bottom on those. And that's gone. Oh, I should have made them. The pre-made ones are so small. They are, yeah, they are quite small. These are, these are massive on the other hand. But hey ho, at least you get a proper bite and you can really dump it, dump it, dunk it in that chutney. But at least you'll get more of them. So always look on the positive, always look on the bright side. And Rosa yeah. is here. She was late because she was working, but she's here. Hi, in. Rosa. Welcome to the live stream. I hope you're well. I hope work wasn't too tedious and too stressful. Um, it's lovely that you've joined us anyway. Right, so we've got a bit of colour on the bottom there. Now, I'm just going to have to use this lid. <laughs> Hank said you're really good at your job. Oh, thank you, Hank. You're very kind. Right. So now be careful because we're mixing oil and water. As I said, I've put too much oil in there. I just want to steam this. So I'm just gonna, it's gonna spit. Put the lid on, turn it down a little bit and let it start to steam as well. And that way we're gonna be cooking them. Now what you don't wanna do with your pan is keep lifting the lid off too much because um, obviously you're losing the steam then. But if I show you, so one of the problems with these metal steamers is that the liquid drops back on to your uh, pastries or dumplings, which then sort of makes them soggy. But they're still sticky. So you can see that they're still sticky. So until they have stopped being sticky, they're not quite cooked through. So we're gonna let I've had, that do. I've had some intel from my colleague in the other room. According to the one show, the record for people cooking along live was 177, just beaten this week by Raheel, who had 532 people cooking. I reckon we could beat that. I reckon we can easily beat that. So 500 people cooking along yeah. we could do that in a heartbeat so we need to get more people cooking along live look at that so they are looking good so that needs to steam as well so we're looking good right how is everybody else doing have we got any questions or any anything any 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 comments whilst that is doing that i'm going to start to think about dishing up just so that you can see the chutney has anyone else commented about their chutney or their jar mm. so if I was doing this for myself I'd probably make it a little bit hotter um, but the kids are gonna be dipping in so I don't want to I don't want it to just be about me but look at that, it looks lovely and rich and delicious and tasty. I really liked seeing some of the um, aftermath pictures of your kitchens last week, which quite a few people shared with me. It was very funny to see the, uh, the carnage that, that um, ensues in your kitchens after you've done a cook-along. It's brilliant, I love it. Right, so that's... Exciting. Can any spice at all be ground in these grinders, like peppercorns? Uh, yeah, peppercorns, salt, you can grind in the grinders. Um, the reason I put coriander in here, because coriander is one that's a little bit funny to grind, um, because it gets quite papery and wafery, so that's why I did a little bit of a test and it actually worked like that, so that's all good, but yeah, pretty much any. Michael said, last summer I seem to recall some weeks we had over a thousand viewers. We did, we had over a thousand viewers. Um, I think we're, our, our most was 1,500 viewers we got yeah. um, on the live cook along. So I think we're right up there, but we need to build that back up. Um, but yeah, 1,500 was the, the highest. Look at these. Yum. They are looking good. They're hot. That's 
Fist of hands. Is anybody else cooking yet or is everybody just watching to see how they come out? Linda just ordered a grinder for peppercorns. Lovely. Johnny's dog always hides in the corner when he's cooking. Wimp. <laughs> Why does your dog hide in the corner? Is it because there's lots of swearing going on and throwing of things? Can you just hold the chutney up, please? Yep. Yeah. So here you go. This is what the chutney looks like. Not Ooh, that Hang far. on, I'm too far. Can you see? It's like a really nice, thick, ketchupy consistency. Yeah? Yum. And we'll get, we can go put a little bit of garnish on there, just a little bit of colour because we like Michelle's to got 10 in the steamer and is going to fry the rest. 10 in the steamer? Gosh, you are on fire. That's amazing. I'm just going to see. Yeah, they're still quite sticky. So they've got a little bit of a way to go. Same principle here. So if they're sticky, they're nearly, nearly there. So... Time to have a Michael little Michael has a couple of suggestions for future Fridays. Hasn't said what the suggestions oh. are yet. Who's that, Michael? Mm. Michael, I'd love to hear your future suggestions for the uh, Friday Night Curry Club because that's what we like to hear. Whatever you guys think, please do share it with me. If you've got any ideas, anything you'd like to try, always, always, always happy to, to listen. Okay, so we are pretty much pretty much there I think they're looking really good can you see I'll let you see what they look like so simmering away yum now what a lot of as I said before um quite often once these are cooked what a lot of um the streets street vendors do is they will just put their chutney into the momos and mix everything up which is fine so you know if you like them coated like that absolutely fine no reason why you can't do that i just prefer to have them set out so that you can literally dunk and dip into your um your mixture <laughs> i'm just going to turn them they're looking good so i'm just trying to be quicker for you okay so um, we've made the chutney, which or the ajar, which was a tomato-based ajar. We used some sesame seeds in there, ginger, garlic, um, cashmere chilies. Um, you could have added a hot chili if you wanted to. Some soy sauce, a little bit of salt, and some sugar and vinegar. So I added a little bit extra vinegar, and then we just let that cook and simmer just until everything sort of comes together and it reduces down. It's nice and thick. And then we gave that a lovely blitz. So that's our ajar or chutney or momo ajar. Um, and you can have all different kinds of one. You could do um, a mint style version. Um, there's all different kinds of chutneys that you can have with this. You could just have it with a chili sauce if you wanted to. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can put these together. Michael said Calcutta like. egg rolls with chicken. Mm. Yeah. Um, and he remembers fondly a dish he used to eat in a South Indian place in Memphis, Andra chicken. What was that? Andra chicken. Ah, nice. Okay. Keep those ideas coming in. Right, I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Liz has said, I can't cook along tonight. I had the COVID injection and I've got a headache, so I'm watching oh and listening. Oh, no. I hope you're feeling okay very, very soon. So I'm just going to show you what these momos look like. I'm just going to pop them on the side. Hank is having fun with the dough and rolling them out in all shapes except round. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's absolutely fine, Hank. It's still going to taste just as good, even if it's not completely round. So I'm going to continue to let those steam because they're going to take a little bit longer. But I just wanted to show you what they look like. So these are chicken momos spiced with coriander and cumin. Move the chicken. And there we go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, let me get the right position. There we go. Um, with that lovely, lovely, lovely ajar. I'm just going to cut into one. 
so that you can see what it looks like and I will spin it round and, okay, oh, it smells amazing so if you can see it if they're quite hot but I'll show you so that's what they look like inside oh hang on can you see so it's all cooked through which is obviously the really important bit but as you squidge it it should be really quite moist now I am gonna dip and dive in because I can just before the kids get into it mm -mm -mm. oh my god see that's a beautiful thing mm. I don't think I'm allowed to double dip Oh, that's so tasty. And when you have it with the Momo, when you have the Ajar with the Momos, you'll see why this Ajar works. On its own, you might have thought, oh, it doesn't quite hit the mark, but once you have it with the Momo, oh my God. Mmm, delicious. I've got it all over my face, so no, I'm sorry. So there you have it. A lovely Friday night curry club concluded. Daryl so, has oh. said, I wanted to cook along, but I accidentally nailed my hand to a piece of wood. I've been in A&E all afternoon. Oh, my God. I hope your hand heals, Darren. Um, Daryl, is Darryl. it? Daryl, I hope your hand heals. Um, it sounds really, really painful, but make sure you uh, get some rest and, 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 and you can cook this another time with me so here you go these are um nepali style momos filled with a lovely spicy chicken um filling and a tomato ajar made specially for you for our friday night curry club um thank you for joining me i hope you've had fun and as always i will ask you to give the video a thumbs up um if you haven't subscribed yet please do so and take a photo of your dish and make sure you share it with me because I'd love to see what you created and I will share it across my social media channels as well. So please do take um, a little picture and let me know how you get on. Thank you for joining.